everybody. Welcome to the next episode of Southern Renaissance. And I got a very special guest. I can't think of a more special guest than uh, right here. I got my dad, Thomas Howdy. E. Purdue. Yep. Howdy. Yep, that's him. So he's a legend broadcaster and he's been around the world. He's He's got a lot of stories. So he's one of the most interesting people I can think of to uh, interview. So I'm glad you're here, Dad. Thanks for doing it. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> well, uh, tell me about where you were born and uh, how it was like growing up over there. Well, I was born down in Geneva County, Hartford, Alabama, behind two mules, job down in a collimator. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, uh, well uh, that, that's where I, I was born. We, we were sharecroppers and... Uh, with with, with uh, my dad would get the my dad would uh, would farm the land and I uh, do all the work and the landlord get half the crop and we got the other half a crop as that old song Tex Ritter said leaving the wife, leaving the woman one old dress and it was full of holes uh, <laughs> so what you're saying you you guys were sharecroppers and yeah, that's, we that's the way it worked they would take yeah. They would let you uh, live there, right? And then you would, they would take half of it. Half and then everything, you would just, yeah. Okay. And, and we, we used to, uh, uh, we had the rolling store used to come by all the time, and, and uh, we would uh, trade stuff. We used to trade our chicken eggs for for butter, or what not for butter, for other stuff. Well, we had butter and stuff. And we'd eat, we used bunny eggs and trade our chicken eggs because we were poor. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you got to survive, right? Yeah. Well, uh, what do you, I know you have, have some sisters, or, and uh, what, what did you guys do for fun? What we do for fun? Well, my, uh, my, uh, uh, Mitzi, we, we used to uh, build us roads, and I'd have the magnesium bottle, a big old blue bottle. That was for our bus, and we, we'd, we'd build bridges and things. Play and my sister would get out in the cornfield and plat all the corn, all the corn stuff. Okay. And uh, uh but w- we used to play and and uh, climb trees and fish and all that yeah. type of good stuff. Well, that's good. Yeah, um, I know you you started at a young age, kind of like in uh, thinking about wanting to be an entertainer and uh, doing radio and stuff. Where, when did you uh, realize you wanted to be on the radio? Well, I, I first I first started working with Armed Forces Radio and Television Service about 1958 when my, I used to help. Uh, uh, do the TV show. We had them big old long cords and the big old big big old uh, cameras, big oh, yeah. things. You know, yeah. back back then. You know, and yeah. I, we started. I started with that, and then I I, uh, I, I realized that I, I I wanted to be on radio. So I, I, they taught me how how to do it, and I started. I guess I started on radio about nineteen. Uh, 62. Okay. Well, I remember you telling me the story that you used to get out in the field and you had a stick and you'd put a can on it oh, and oh, pretend yeah. like you were singing or, or preaching, right? Well, yeah. Well, what we did there, <laughs> we'd be picking cotton, I was supposed to be. Yeah. And my sister would sing and I'd get me a stick and I'd preach and they'd sing and we'd have the uh, cotton patch jamboree. <laughs> <laughs> cotton patch jamboree. Yes, sir. Right. I like it. <laughs> I remember you telling me that story, and that always, I always remembered that. I thought yeah. that was pretty funny. Uh, so, uh, who is the Alabama Wild Man? That's me. <laughs> so, not everybody knows, but my dad, he when he was on the radio, he used to be known as the Alabama Wild Man. I was known that a lot of all throughout the military. <laughs> And this was on uh, arms service, Ar- armed forces radio armed forces and television radio. service. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so uh, so you how'd you get into that originally? You, you got in the military. You started in the Marines, right? I started in the Marine Corps. And I, I did my TV thing on, on in, in the Marine Corps, but then I, I really did my radio thing when I went into the Navy. Really, when okay. I really started that. Then I got you. And I helped set up. Oh well, 
on well, I was on radio at, at um, Midway Island, Okinawa, uh, Sigonella, Sicily, Italy, and all them places. But uh, uh, I, I used to. I know one time I got trans. I had to go on a on a thing for about a, a month and a half to set up uh, a, a, a Navy exchange. I set the whole thing up. And I had to record a month and a half rec- shows oh, before yeah. I left. I got you. And boy, it, I, I, I took about two hours getting the first one, trying to make sure it was perfect. After that, I said, "Forget it, let it roll." <laughs> you just <laughs> did whatever. Yeah. So we fill it up. So so we so they'd play my shows, but I, I wouldn't be there. And uh, I always um, I was always known as Alabama Wild Man. <laughs> Now, where did that name come from? Where'd you get that name from? Well, I'm from Alabama, and I <laughs> so and wild. wild. <laughs> yeah. and that's I, a Jerry I, Reed song. It was Jerry Reed. That's where, yeah. Jerry Reed song is where yeah. it came from. I, I guess I got it from him. I don't know. But there's one day I was on a radio, and I was saying, Alabama Wild, my mature turned over and knocked me out. And my yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember you telling me that. So you said you was on the air, and, uh, yeah, you you – you were alive on the air, and then you leaned back in your chair, and it flipped out from under you, and it yeah. knocked you out, and you had dead air there for a while. Yeah. That's a sin in broadcasting. It's a terrible sin. Yeah. That's funny. How, how long do you think you were out? Well, not long, but I had my other guy to take over to. Oh, you night. had an engineer there? Oh, engineer, were yeah. Were they yeah. laughing at you? Or they oh, just oh, yeah. <laughs> giving you a hard time? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Um, I, I used to play. Uh, I, I used to play. Uh, I played all the country shows. I played the latest hits. I played the the top uh, top twenty of the rock and roll. I used to play morning easy listen morning show, and I just played play variety. I played some uh, some t- uh, a, a Midway Island. I, I did all the morning show at six o'clock in the morning. I put on the morning show. Yeah, easy listening type music. Okay, and then I played country music and the top rock and roll songs. So I did a variety. Now you got to when you were in the radio. I know you got to meet some of the stars other day who some of the people you got to meet i know you met the leuven brothers oh yeah i met leuven brother and i met uh uh willie nelson willie and you said that you met willie nelson when he had a real short yeah crew cut. had a crew cut <laughs> it looked sharp clean long time cut. ago yeah <laughs> yes, and it all went downhill yeah. after <laughs> yeah and uh uh, a Berlin Husky, I helped put his show on. Oh, okay. when he's on on the wings of a snow white ant. That's a bird, bird. snow white dove. That's yeah, a good yeah, one. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. So uh, I didn't say this earlier, but Dad is uh, my dad are here. Thomas E. Purdue, aka the Alabama Wild Man. He's really the one that got me into music because uh, when I was growing up, I, I think I was seven years old or something. He had all these old records. Uh, he had all these old country and rockabilly records, and I listened to them, and I really loved it. I, I would have never heard all that if it wasn't for Dad and uh, him also just knowing about that kind of music <laughs> and stuff. Yeah, I like that. One. And sure. learn about it. He was always uh, tell me about it. And Dad kind of has this showmanship and being on the radio, and he's just good at talking and being with people, uh, you know, being around people and uh yeah so that's where i got a lot of my my uh showmanship i think well uh you said you played country music sometimes but then you other times you played easy listening right yeah just some whatever shows in the mornings in the morning show was easy listening that's, okay. that's what you played okay yeah uh, but I don't forget who, what I used to play. The yeah, old, old, I'd old forget folk, all that easy listening, folk. too, if it was me. Well, I, I like it. You like, like easy listening? Yeah, I like, I like all the variety of music. I figured you like heavy metal, Dad. No, I didn't like heavy metal. <laughs> I, I, I remember I played all the Beatles music until it got the strawberry Roads, that name of Strawberry it? Fields. And then I wouldn't play that because it was drug music. I would oh, used to put that yeah. on the radio. Yeah, you kind of, you you raised more on the just down, 
down home country yeah. stuff and yeah. that rockabilly, but you didn't get into that more progressive type sounds yeah. more later on. I no, guess. no uh, I, I played all the Beatles music till they got that oh, like yellow you. submarine. And yeah, all. yeah, they got kind of weird there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know they early on they were playing more like rockabilly type yeah. stuff. I guess. Yeah, I like. Uh, Liked until they got yeah. into drug music. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not for everybody, I'm sure. Um, well, uh, I mean, I know you got to, there's other people you got to, you got to meet Elvis, didn't you? I remember you yeah, telling me about yeah. meeting Elvis. I Presley. met Elvis, and, and then I even met, what's the, I can't think, the guy that put on all the shows for the military people around the world years ago. Uh, like maybe Dick Clark? Or wait, not Dick Clark. No. Uh, gosh, I can't think of his name. I can't either. I, I saw his show. I think too. I know who you're talking about, though, but I can't remember. I was stationed in Atlanta, the Goonie Birds. The Goonie Birds. Now, what is the Goonie Bird? Well, that, that was a Midway Island where I was stationed over there. And them Goonie Birds, I guess airplanes learn how to fly from the Goonie Birds. <laughs> <laughs> them the Goonie Birds take off like this. If the wind <laughs> stopped, they just fall. Oh. And over at Midway Island, we didn't have, we, we had horses, but there was bicycles. But we called them horses because you weren't allowed to have no car. You had bicycles. You'd be going down the road, old Goonie Bird just drop and <laughs> right, hit you in the face <laughs> like <laughs> off your horse. And <laughs> See, this is stuff that no one would know about if you didn't know about because I'd never heard of all the. I knew about Goonie Birds from you telling me about uh, it. They used to do the Goonie Bird Love Dance. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> well, the Goonie Birds said they'd get dance and put their bill, get with each other and just dance. <laughs> we call it Goonie Bird Love Dance. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Well, uh, you have all kinds of slang that I like. I remember you saying you when you would. Uh, be picking cotton and stuff you'd say your dad say don't slubber your work yeah slubber yeah. i guess don't be slothful but he'd say I, I don't have to do it that's yeah right. but he'd say don't slubber don't your work. slubber <laughs> work that's right <laughs> yeah we used to i uh we, we uh, uh my daddy told me if i pick so much cotton i think it was 300 and something pounds a day if i did that i he'd, he'd let me go to see the movie well, the movie at that time, he'd give me a quarter, and that would pay for the drink, popcorn, and the movie, and have a nickel left. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it's inflated a little bit since yeah. then. <laughs> but, uh, but see, if I, if I didn't do that, he wouldn't let me go with me, go ride the mule and wagon to town because that's what we had at that time. Oh, mule okay. And wagon. So you, you didn't even have a car. You no, just had a mule, mule and wagon. Hitchhike or mule and wagon. Yeah. I mean, you were sharecroppers. So. Yes, that's what we yeah. were. We, we, we was Po. Po. Yeah. <laughs> like that song. What's that song you like? Po folks. Yeah, Who po is that folks. By? Billy, Bill, Bill Anderson. Bill Anderson. That's right. Yeah, Whispering my, Bill Anderson. Yeah, one of my favorite songs. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. And you like that song. Uh, I know you like that song, Patches, too. Oh, that's one is of my favorite songs. Clarence yeah. Carter. Yeah, Clarence yeah, Carter. Yeah, that's a good yeah. one. I like Pat, but them is two of my Two favorite country songs, believe yeah. it or not. I believe it. Yeah, yeah. you've told me that before, and I, those two really good songs. Uh, yeah. It just uh, that's, well, that's well Patches is not really a country song. It's a yeah. more of a rock and roll song. Yeah, yeah, it's not really country, no. but it's kind of um, about I guess somebody raised in the country. Yeah, it's about truth. Yeah. So I think that's the thing I love about uh, country and all that kind of stuff is it's so authentic. It comes yeah. from real. Comes from the heart. Yeah, it comes from the heart, and that's why yeah. that's why I like that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, so uh, it's funny because some of these questions I was going to ask you already talked about. <laughs> so, uh -huh. so when you were in the military, I know you went some different places. What were some of the places you went? I know you said you went to Italy and Okinawa, Japan, Singapore, Philippines. Um, uh, Hawaii, I was stationed in Hawaii, and uh, I was uh, in, in uh, it, Rome, Italy. I was stationed in Rome. I was stationed at. I can't think of. Yeah, there was well, a bunch of places. I, <laughs> bunch more I, I, I couldn't of remember them. that many places. Yeah. Um, so what? I know you were in a. Now this was during the Vietnam War, right? Yeah, I was, a, I was in Vietnam. Yeah, yeah, so that was probably a really rough time. Um, so, what, 
what were you doing at in Okan? I know you tell me about uh, Italy. It was different because you'd go to a restaurant and you'd have to pay for every single little thing. Yeah, you had to order. pay for your seat, had to pay for your plates, <laughs> and all that stuff. Yeah, I did, I'd never heard of that until you told me told me about. It. I didn't know yeah. that such a thing existed. I just yeah. assume you look on the menu and that's. Everything else is free. <laughs> well, when I, 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 I was stationed, I, I, I was in, uh, not wrong. There's one place I can't think of, but it, no English, you know, so okay. I'm trying to get me breakfast. And, 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 um, and, and, and uh, normally all they have is, is, uh, is, is uh, they don't have no cow. They, they, they worship cows. Uh, oh, okay. I got you. And I, uh, so was you, it maybe India or something? No. Oh, somewhere else. You no, know, it was some. It was. I can't think of. I it. got you. But it, it, anyway, I'm I'm trying to get me some cow milk instead of goat milk. Oh yeah, they want yeah. No goat milk. So I'm going moo. <laughs> <laughs> they thought I was crazy. <laughs> I still wind up with goat butter and goat milk uh. and all that old bunch of stuff. You know? <laughs> So you were mooing at them, trying to get them to, to get understand them. what you were cow, saying. I want cow milk, not goat milk. They just thought you were having a nervous breakdown or something. <laughs> that was in Spain, I think. That's uh, now you. Now, what did you do in Okinawa? When I was stationed in Okinawa. Yeah, when you were stationed over there. I was in. I was in the Marine Corps. We we we, um, we had went on maneuvers and hiked. Long, long way. Back when Kennedy was in office, we, we had to do a 50 mile hike in the Marine Corps. Oh, man. And uh, you'd, you'd have to walk, but the last five miles, you had to run singing the Marine Corps hymn. Yeah. And if you didn't make it, you had to do it the next day. So I, and so I made it because I, I, I knew I was going to make it. Yeah. <laughs> like Paris Island, I knew I was going to make that because I went to, when I went to Paris, well, my daddy had a sign for me. I was 17. And my daddy said, boy, if you don't make it, don't you come home. Don't you insult my name. So yeah. I went to Paris Island, and everybody in my platoon was from Brooklyn, New York, but me. <laughs> and I said, I know I'm going to make it. Them Yankees can't outdo all about my country, boy, no way in the world. So I I, I made it. That helped yeah. me. If it had been all Alabama folks, I probably wouldn't have made it. Yeah, yeah. It was you, motivation. I, I know what you mean. Yeah, people, uh, I think a lot of people underestimate people from the South. Yeah. And uh, But, yeah, you can't do that. Mm. We'll, <laughs> we'll do good. Um, so, yeah, I, I it's been really interesting uh, just – over the years, you tell me all kinds of crazy mm-hmm. stories. Uh, so I think that's probably when the Alabama Wild Man was born right there. You were just you were from up against the world, and uh, you just wanted to uh, express yourself, right? Yeah, back when I was an instructor in the Marine Corps, uh, I get I have a whole bunch of people. I say, "Who's from Alabama?" I get a whole platoon from Alabama. The first one. I said, now, y'all got to do the best because I'm from Alabama. You're from Alabama. We're number one. <laughs> so if they foul up, I really got them. You give them a hard time. <laughs> yeah. That's tough love, right? Yeah, that's it. Well, um, now, you they used to be pretty rough on y'all back then, right? They would call you maggot and all this oh, kind of well, stuff. That's a name they call you maggot. <laughs> I, I, when I first went to Paris Island, I guess farming, I must stay down a step or something. I, I, I couldn't stay in step. So they put me at the back of the platoon, uh, duck walking, quack, 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 duck walking, <laughs> until I learned how to march right. So I go to the back of the platoon going, quack, quack, that's what I had to do. Hey, that's just good. Uh, like old Chuck Berry used to do his <laughs> duck walk. That's good practice. Yeah, I, I've seen him do that with that guitar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, uh, I, I was in San Diego one year a long time ago where they had all the all the top rock and roll singers on stage in San Diego, California. Hmm. But that's been a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> the platters and all them. Okay. Like those vocal groups yeah, and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, all them, yeah. Well, like I was saying earlier, you did get to meet Elvis, right? Like, mm-hmm. you, you, now you shook his hand. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> well, yeah, well, I was working at the theater. 
and he was putting a show on there, and I shook his hand. All them girls kissed my hand <laughs> because oh, because I I shook Elvis's hand. Yeah. Oh, it, <laughs> he was something else. He was. He, he was really good, and he had the quartet with him. Oh yeah, the the uh, the million dollar. I mean, not the million. Uh, uh, the uh, oh man, I'm blanking out. I Jordan Ayers. Yeah, Jordan Ayers. I, yeah, I yeah. can't believe I blanked out there for a second. But uh, yeah, that's. That's got to have been that an was interesting 19, time. That was 1957. Okay, <laughs> 57. That sounds about, I guess, when he was really taken yeah, off. Yeah, he off good. He, he, went, he, he, uh, he had that hound dog song, you know, <laughs> and he, he got up there and he pointed his hand out there. He said, you ain't nothing but a hound dog. This old girl fainted. <laughs> It's like he had a power over me. Yeah. He just point his finger and yeah. that thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he threw his coat out there and they all went crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I know that, yeah, let's see, did, did you ever get to meet Ernest Tubb? I know you. I've been to Ernest Tubb Record Show. Okay. Yeah, okay. I got there, you. Yeah. I've seen uh, Ernest Tubb Record Show, Roy Tubb Show, Roy oh, Tubb yeah, Plays, yeah. and I've seen all of them. You always yeah. talk about the Grand Ole Opry. Yeah, I've been the Grand Ole Opry two or three times. Yeah, I even went to Tootsie's. Tootsie's, Tootsie's yeah. Bar and Grill. That's right outside the Grand Ole Opry. All the stars, and when they get through, they used to go to Tootsie's, and I went there one time. Yeah, just for the heck of it, I went oh, to sure, Tootsie's yeah. one time. Yeah, uh huh. Yeah, and this was uh, back in like what the fifties or sixties? About sixties. Sixty. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I guess a lot of I know Nashville's changed a lot since yeah. then, but I know that uh, back then you could see a lot more. I think they still have that. Yeah, I think it is still there, but um, I know it's definitely a little different yeah. <laughs> now. But uh, but yeah, I, I, that I, I was on New Year's Eve, and uh, WSM had their microphone there talking to different people. Oh, interviewing people? Yeah. Like I'm doing now. <laughs> yeah, WSM, yeah. I say this is, I tell you what, this is way out of my comfort zone. I've never been the interviewer. I'm used to doing everything, the production, being interviewed, everything else but right here. So I wanted to stretch myself out. And I said, well, I got the most legendary broadcaster is my dad, so I can't not him get get him on here. And, you know, a lot of my personal stuff, I've done more music and stuff. But with this, I'm just wanting to have all kinds of people on here and just kind of hear stories about people from the South, because I think there's a lot of interesting uh, people and a lot of things that people don't hear about that that's going on. And uh, just there's a rich history here. I think it kind of inspired me when I went up north. Uh, and they, you know, they they sort of had an impression of me already just because I was from Alabama and I don't fit a stereotype. I'm just my own person. And that's the way most people are. Uh, so just want to get some some culture out there and just show people that there's things going on everywhere. And uh, South's a pretty cool place, too. I like the North, too. I, I don't. I don't like this humidity coming back to this humidity. It's been so I, hot lately. It, it don't bother me. Uh, you're but, probably immune to it by now. I, I stayed in California for 10 years, and uh, I went up there and said, how you doing? They look at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You, uh, Yeah, you went to, out to California. You, you said you had – did you get a Cadillac or something, I think you told oh, me? Yeah, I had a Cadillac. Oh, yeah. I, had, yeah, I, I, came, I came back to Alabama. Let me tell that one. Yeah, yeah. I came back to Alabama. I had, me a, had my Cadillac, and I had $1,000 bills in my pocket, and I had my Brogana on. I had a yellow – a red bandana in my pocket, and my slaves rolled up with my cigarettes like uh, J- J- James, James, did, James did, you know, yep. and all that stuff. And I stopped to get me some gas, and uh, I gave a hundred dollar bill. Is that all you guys? A hundred dollar bill? I said, Yeah, I got ten of them. What'd you do? Rob a bank? Because you know, I'm from so- poor folk, I yeah, yeah. have all that much. I have my Cadillac and all that stuff. I was Mr. It for a little while, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm born with uh, riding a mule in a wagon and up to a Cadillac, yeah. I hey. had a Fleetwood, the biggest one they had at that time, oh, man. That's like a land barge. Yeah, it was real big. <laughs> it was so big when I was qualifying to 
to, to get my driver like, I couldn't pearl up her. It was too big to true change up and say, just forget it. It's too big. <laughs> <laughs> just forget. This is not physically possible for you to park this Cadillac. Yeah. So we'll just pass you. So, so, um, I wanted, I want to impress, impress these folks from my hometown of Hartford, Alabama, <laughs> that this old boy moved uptown. He came in like a superstar. <laughs> You said you kind of, you're talking about how clean cut Willie Nelson was, but you said you had like a, what was it? You put a bandana on your head and stuff, being a. I, I, I a that was back in the 60s. 60s, yeah. But being the uh, flower children, oh, I was stationed yeah. in California at that yeah. time, yeah. yeah. During that time. I even had my sandals on. Your sandals. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you you would never believe me. No, I believe you. I believe you. I mean, you got you got lots of story, but it's funny, yeah. Because uh, yeah, Dad is definitely yeah. He he's he's wild the way he talks, but he's just very uh, calm. Just hangs out now. <laughs> and uh, but yeah, that's uh, I I could uh, I'm trying to. Oh, another thing I think is interesting is you've been a um, your, your hobby has been the weather. For many years, about fifty-two years. Fifty-two years. I used to be on Channel. Thir- I used to give the weather to Channel Thirteen for about about thirteen years. They have a picture there, and they'd yeah. say, uh, "Tom Perdue, weather from Vimont, Alabama." Yeah. Tom, Thomas Perdue. Yeah. 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 Well, you. I remember growing up. You always had an instrument shelter. Yeah. And I, you, I you got, got all got the one. measurements. I've got, got a. Got, you've got an it. actual book. Where you wrote every measurement in there for every day for fifty years? For fifty two years, 52 I still years. do it every day. Every day, I, I mean, don't that's miss pretty, a day. Pretty impressive. So I, I do daily, and then a monthly report, and then I do the yearly thing. So I, it's just my hobby. Yeah, that's. Uh, I mean, that's really interesting. I don't know anyone else that has done that <laughs> other than maybe a meteorologist, where it's, uh, that's uh, their job. Uh, or Jim something. McCravey got me started. Oh, that. okay. Now. Now, who is that, Jim? He he was a he was a weatherman for Coleman a long time ago. Okay, I was thinking. Yeah, I recognize that name. Yeah, I was man, thinking he was lived at Hatsville. Okay, yeah, I rem- I think I remember that. Um, you remember um, when I, I used to be in the Cub Scouts, and I don't. I guess you you just had such a good relationship with the Navy because you used to be a navy recruiter and yeah. you had gotten that uh actual navy boat for us to yeah we got you remember a, that yeah, we got a boat for, yeah, to, to have on the parade and i was i was real blessed because the the guy that run in the movie i could he'd do my navy commercials on at, at the theater all the time for me oh man like for free, free. you just throw them on yeah, you can't free. beat that yeah, my dad was blessed. you had connections <laughs> yeah I did. yeah you were uh now you know I, i've done a lot of sales recent years but i think i've got a lot of tips from you uh from doing that stuff because you were like i say you were a navy recruiter for, yeah i went to sales training for a while there i, I had to go to school on on selling so yeah so no, I, I tell you if, if i'd give my choice one day I, so you can go in the Navy or, or, or buy this car. They bought the car, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you. I'm sure you're persuasive. I mean, you're good, good with talking to people. And you're, let's say, you're 84 now. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you're, uh, you're doing good. Um, Bless. I know. Me too. But um, I'm just, I'm so glad I got to talk to you, Dad. And it's, it's. Uh, it's always good to talk to you and just talk about all your stories. I can't. Now, another thing, I, I wrote a song. It's been a long time ago now called uh, Stubborn as a Mule. And I think I got that from you, that saying that you're saying is stubborn as a mule. You yeah. used to say that, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I think I might have got that from you. Um, but, yeah, that's uh, it's it's good to uh, to hear about your stories. I think that when you're in the Navy um, – now you, what was another place you went besides Italy and Okinawa? Was it you went to? Uh, I've tried to think of the other place you went to. Singapore. Singapore. That's it. That's where I got this tattoo. That's right. You see, you got your tattoo, and uh, you know I got a couple of tattoos. I, and and we, we, I was rolling around with the guy riding you around on this thing with a pull you. The pull rickshaw. You. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Well, it's yeah. funny. Have you ever been on Rick's home? I haven't. I guess I can put that on my bucket list or whatever they call it. 
Well, I remember I'd give you a hard time because I got a, a couple of tattoos and, uh, you know, I, I, I could have done or done without them. But like, you know, you had your tattoo, so I could always be like, well, you got a tattoo. <laughs> That's what Ada did. Yeah. It's, oh, man. See, Ada's uh, my niece. And then, uh, yeah, we're <laughs> – see, we, we use it against you. <laughs> Give you a hard time. Uh, so use it again, me. Again, me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wasn't too much trouble, though, was it? No. Not too much. <laughs> I have been very blessed. With yeah. That. Yeah. Definitely. And me, too. Um, I've been blessed. That you you know, you've been my dad in my life. And, uh, yeah, I couldn't I couldn't ask for a better dad, for sure. Um, but, well, what what is some – I know you had your different taglines and your broadcast and stuff you did on the radio – like, give me one of those. Uh, I, I'm trying to think of what you would call it. Like, you, you'd say, I'm the Alabama Wild Man. <laughs> you do stuff like that. Mm-hmm. What, uh, why don't you do one of those? Like, yeah, let me get bringing one of my records on the air. Yeah, yeah, okay. that's what I'm trying. Like, right, you're queuing okay. it up. Okay. Do like, we'll pretend like okay. you're on the air. Right uh uh-uh, neighbor, don't you touch that dial. This is Alabama Wild Man. I'll be around for the next hour playing the sounds of the country you hear. Well, our first song today is Miss Loretta Lynn, coal miner daughter, and it's going out to you and you all and all you Kentucky folks and you and my grandparents, you too, coal miner's daughter, Miss Loretta Lynn. <laughs> See, that's, that's all I would need to to hear, and I'd be listening to that whole song. <laughs> that's and that's kind of that old broadcasting technique, I guess. Yeah, where you, we, we used to do that. Yeah. Where you're trying to, like, yeah. there was the intro of the song, and you're trying to get your intro in before yeah. the singing starts. Yeah, you, you you can't talk. You talk before it starts. Sometimes you have enough time to give the weather in there between that, you know. Oh, sometime. yeah. Sometimes you did. You have, what you do, what you what we did, we cued the thing on a tape record. We cued them. But then we we seen how long the queue went before it started, and we know where we had time to say what we had time to say. Or not. Yeah. Because you don't want to talk on talk on talk. Yeah. That's uh not right. That's a faux pas or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, yeah. And, and then we had, and, and then I had. Uh, I, used that book, but I can't remember nothing I used to say much. <laughs> There's a lot. Of stuff. <laughs> you used, had a lot of stuff. I I used to. I talk, I talk, I talk a lot of stuff. <laughs> oh, George Hamilton fourth. I bring him up. Oh yeah, George Hamilton. I said, then we got the the uh, uh, the guy from East Tennessee, George Hamilton one, the two, the th- oh, George Hamilton fourth. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I always wondered that because how many other George Hamiltons were? What, what? Why would he just not say George Hamilton? On no, he was a fourth. The other family, yeah. I wonder what his other fam- part of family did. I, I don't know. <laughs> well, you had the thing I know you did about Ernest Tubb. You said the uh, oh yeah, I said, Texas two by four. Texas two by four. I said I say er, this Ernest Tubb and the Texas two by four. And instead of, instead of Texas troubadours, yeah. I like said Texas two by four. You know, oh, I had yeah. the little co- color in it. Change it up, yeah. <laughs> so that you call it color radio. You give it that personality. Yeah. Right? yeah. Yeah, because that's, I mean, that's kind of a lost art now. And like you were saying, you, the way you cue up those records and yeah. stuff, and you had to hit that in between point just yeah. right with the music. They before, don't do that no more. Before the sync, now you can edit it and do different things, and they make it a lot easier. But you had yeah. to do it manually and yeah. be always uh, yeah. thinking ahead. You're editing as you do it, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's definitely a. You're definitely, I, I got a lot of those ideas from you, I think, and just, just being able to do it right on the spot. That's why I think, uh, I think just, yeah, yeah. just right on the spot. Yep. <laughs> just right on it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, well, uh, I know that, that you've, uh, done some preaching and stuff too. You've been, you've been a preacher for a while. Uh, I've been a, a outreach minister preacher for, for 30 years. That's good. Yeah. I, I, I preach at, Prisons, uh, to drug addicts, to homeless people, to nursing homes, to you name it. Yeah, <laughs> I know you have. I, re- I remember you doing it for many years. Uh, wow. Yeah, so that's uh, 
I think that's always been good. You you care really care about people deeply, and I I, I try to uh, be the same way. Have empathy for people. Well, see, that's why we're left here to help and care for people, not stab them in the back exactly. and insult them and lowrate them. We're supposed to try to encourage them. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't help anybody to do that, does it? No. So that's kind of, that's another reason, you know, I wanted to do this thing, this uh, podcast or, and just, uh, yeah, just try to tell some good stories. And I think, uh, I think we got some good, good information that I, if anybody uh, didn't know about the Alabama wild man, they're going to know about him now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So did you uh, did you always when when you were growing up did you what kind of music did you listen to grow up like like where, when's the first time you got to hear music was it like on the radio I mean I don't, I know you guys were real poor because you were sharecroppers well the uh, first music we had we had a battery radio okay and we'd listen to the John Daniel Quartet and things. To just a little bit, but we were so poor we'd go to our neighbor's house to listen to the Grand Ole Opry because we didn't we didn't have a radio that that uh, uh, that would do it. And then uh, that, that's I I, I I I always loved music. I loved music all my life. My daddy, I'd be supposed to be out in the field working. I'd be listening to music. Daddy, get out of the field, boy. You can't be listening to that music. My daddy had time to listen to music. I love music. I love music all my life. Ever since I can remember, I love music. Yeah. Uh, I sing in the choir at church. And, yeah. You know, I, I try to do whatever. I have led singing at the Jimmy Hill Mission. That's good. Yeah, that's um, you definitely back up your faith and all that, all that stuff. Oh, wow. Um, so I mean, you uh, yeah, because I remember you talked to me about the Grand Old Opry and stuff, and then but that's how you did it. You got to hear it over at your neighbor's house. I yeah, guess, went first they had it. I tell you, I had a transatlantic radio. Yeah. you know, you remember that? Yeah, I was about and, to talk and, about and, that. And Puerto Rico and San Juan, Puerto Rico, our ship was sitting there, and about. Midnight, I could pick up WSM Nashville. Can you imagine? That? Now, now, what, which one is that? That's the. Oh, you would be overseas and you I, could I pick it up. I was in Puerto Rico. Oh, San you were Juan, in Puerto, Puerto Rico. San Juan, okay, Puerto Rico. Okay. I, uh, late at night, I could pick up WSM Nashville. <laughs> oh, that is impressive. <laughs> Well, I remember messing around. You had that radio for a long time I because yeah. I remember messing with it, and I thought that thing was cool because I could pick up uh, radio stations all around the yeah, world and pick, stuff. Pick up everywhere. I'd, I'd, I'd see. I'd, 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 I'd use. I'd have that. I bought it in San Juan, Puerto Rico. Is where I bought oh, it. Oh, you there. bought it in Puerto Rico. Okay. Yeah. At that time, that was about in the sixties. It cost me two hundred and fifty dollars back then. <laughs> <laughs> it was expensive radio. Oh yeah. It was handcrafted Zenos. It was handcrafted. That's probably why it lasted so yeah, long. It, yeah. It, that yeah. thing looked like a um it was all silver. It looked like a had like a car grill on it yeah. and stuff. It's so it, fancy. It, yeah, it was. Yeah, I always I always liked that radio. That was one of my favorite things. Mm -hmm. And I know we uh you know we used to get into arguments and stuff because i'd be i'd be maybe lazy or something and you you'd uh you'd give me punishment you'd we it was before it was when we lived out in wealthy you would you'd make me uh weed eat with like a sling blade oh. <laughs> you remember that yeah the, the, the matter you got the better job you did i know i just start <laughs> slinging that sling blade around and it, like, trim it up you did Use a sling about a quarter of eight. With a sling. <laughs> <laughs> you you harnessed my rage or whatever you call it. That's funny. Yeah, that's that's all. So many stories. You remember that goofy time we were living in Welty, and I thought it'd be cool with uh, my neighbor, and I, I had that little yellow tur Plymouth Turismo. And we were driving, and I jumped over that hill on that gravel road and flipped it over yeah. and smashed the top. And then I, yeah, I, I called you, hey, uh, I smashed the car. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. I, man, I, I, I've done all kinds yeah, of stuff. Yeah, between you and stuff. John, Dad. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. We didn't know how to even begin on that. That was crazy. I mean, I just blessed it. 
I was able to raise y'all. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm I'm blessed that you were there. Uh, that's the one thing. Yeah, Johnny uh, was my brother, and you know, we grew up. We had all. I, every time I think of uh, Johnny, I think about us playing all those video games and stuff because we had all those. Uh, Nintendo games yeah, and stuff when that was yeah. real big. Yeah, we had that little when Nintendo kind of first came out, and they had that little Robbie the Robot. Yeah, came out, picked up the little gyros and st- I think they uh, they discontinued because it, it was dangerous or something. Because they all go flying the yeah. gyros would fly off or something. So uh, and then you made your a skateboard thing at well do oh yeah yeah we made uh i had several of those you know i was i was really big in the skateboarding they're real good and this was in the i guess late 80s and uh and then like early 90s or whatever and then um yeah out at wilty we built a little half pipe and uh we had one that was kind of a smaller one and then later on me and uh my friend john john we we worked on build one. It was kind of out in the woods, but we never finished the deck on one side. So if you went off that, you'd you'd go flying out in the creek. <laughs> so that gave a little, made a little extra exciting. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was uh, that was that was fun. And now you're a good skateboarder. Yeah, that's I loved it. And we when we lived out in Vinemont at a High Point Estates, which was funny, the funniest name for a trailer park. <laughs> We lived at uh, High Point Estates, and we had that that post office was right in front, and we would uh, I'd skate out there because because there's some cement there, and I remember I did that about every day, and I can't believe I didn't break any bones. I just I shoot things I think you're gonna get killed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm surprised I didn't. I some pretty crazy tricks. Um, yeah, I'd ollie down long stairs and, you know, all kinds of stuff. and Jump over things. <laughs> yeah, jump over things. Yeah, I think it's pretty – people understand skateboarding a lot a lot more now. It got kind of popular, but back in uh, Coleman County, people just thought I was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, I w- always enjoyed that, but now my knees are, are suffering <laughs> because of – but uh, it was worth it. <laughs> well – you had fun yeah i had fun that's what it was and it it was healthy other than other than getting hurt a little bit it was it was pretty healthy you know putting all your uh, energy into something positive like that and uh yeah but um you you remember uh when you taught me how to drive in that little was it a geo metro yeah i i went out in the cotton field where you couldn't hurt oh us. yeah i remember that <laughs> yeah we went out in the cotton, cotton field, field. You know, i learned four, four speed yeah <laughs> and i was like it was like a grasshopper jumping <laughs> yeah. up and down but look we well, couldn't hurt none that in the cotton field yeah, <laughs> just knock over some cotton <laughs> yeah and um, uh yeah you learn how i wasn't you glad you learned how to do four speed yeah oh yeah yeah definitely because now if you know everything's most of the time automatic but if i ever run into a car and i need to do that and then i'm i'm a uh you know ride a motorcycle too yeah. i can even drive a forklift <laughs> yeah if i want if i need to go somewhere really really slow i can just jump on a forklift and <laughs> drive across the country it take a long time it take me a while <laughs> <laughs> i was born in uh in Fort Rooker. Camp Rooker. Oh, Camp Rooker. Okay. Yeah, Army base. Okay. Yeah, that's what yeah. I So I was, yeah, so I guess just being from military family, uh, I came from there. Yeah. Then, so you, it's kind of, that's South Alabama, right? That's, yeah. Yeah, that enterprise. Now you're from Hartford, which is, that's South Alabama. Yeah. It's kind of, have you noticed, I feel like, like South Alabama has a little bit different accent. Like it drags out a little longer. Like the it slurs out a little longer. It seems like. The... Well, my daddy, my daddy said, my daddy said, boy, he said, now if you're north of Montgomery, you're a Yankee, and you're west <laughs> of Alabama, you're a furner. A furner. <laughs> <laughs> Now that's a if you're north of Montgomery, you're a Yankee. Yeah. That's that's not a very big space right there. <laughs> oh, my daddy used to that's pray. funny. That's funny. So, so you you're north of Alabama, you're further, further, <laughs> far away. That reminds me of uh, Jason Sims. You know Jason Sims. We had him on the first show. Yeah, I know Jason. Um, 
his dad, you know, I used to do all the television uh, broadcast and yeah, like production that. and stuff. His dad, he had a thick Southern accent and he, he talked to me one day and he said, you still filming? And I, th- I thought he's, he said, are you still feminine? I said, what? what? But he was saying, are you still filming? <laughs> like, oh. I was like, are you, why are you asking me if I'm still feminine? <laughs> what yeah, is that really supposed right. to mean? <laughs> yeah. But he was just, he had that, that uh, kind of that same accent. Well, see, I was safe in California for 10 years. I thought faster than a lot of people. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think that's part of it. Yeah, because... Uh, I, I've noticed that even just being up in Fort Wayne, Indiana for a few years, I think I like my uh, listening, even listening to people, it got recalibrated because I would sort of listen faster because I got so used to hearing people talk slower that I had to adjust. And now it's like I've had to readjust to being back in the South. Well, that's one lady on Channel 19 that talks so fast, I can't understand nothing she <laughs> says. <laughs> She's like, uh, is she like an auctioneer? <laughs> um, she is. She must be some northern Yankee. Northern Yankee. <laughs> I say, you know, we talk about Yankees and stuff a lot, but it's just all in jest because, yeah. you know, there's tons I got of good people get, everywhere. I got nothing against We're nobody. Just, just, that's all we got. Just give it to us. Yeah. <laughs> give us that. And, uh, yeah, but it, we, we have fun. Well, when I was stationed in uh, Chicken Island, Sicily, uh, that they had a band every month to come all from England every month that have another English band can we listen to English band music for a whole year <laughs> English band like uh, from England oh from England okay like British invasion stuff yeah all that. I mean we'd have that the M club that that have an English band there for a month and then hit let leave and oh okay come. I got you they'd yeah. be on a tour or something and come through there no they just hired them for a month oh they'd hire them like a house band or something yeah okay yeah, well, well, I yeah. bet that was interesting it was yeah you're a lot more well traveled than I am <laughs> you've been all over the world and back I've been a long ways <laughs> I, I know I know when I first went over Okanagan. In 1957, when I got on that ship, and I'm doing all right until America faded away. And America faded away. I said, America, America's gone, you know. They said, boy, the closest water is, is uh, four miles down. <laughs> that close to land is. Oh, you know, that land is. oh, I got you. And, and then, when you're on the boat, yeah. And and uh, I'm out in America. We're marching all type of marching about to burn up. I had a packed helmet, all that stuff. And I see this water where I came. I said, "Oh, ocean, you brought me over here, and you're going to take me back one of these days." Yeah. <laughs> And it did. It, it brought did. you back. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I left Guam one time, and I got back to America before I left. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. You just How is this possible? <laughs> because the time changed. Oh, okay. I got you. Yeah, that's a crazy thing about yeah. that time. Like, Australia is on another Well, well uh, I had day, some I friend guess. of mine that had a birthday, and they lost the birthday because we skipped one day and got the other day. Come back, you have two days of the same thing, so I guess I got it back coming back. Yeah. Well, what is it like having the greatest son in the world? <laughs> I'm honored to have you. <laughs> well, thank you. Well, Dad, I, I sure appreciate you, and I, I'm so glad you got to do this. It's interesting. It's like different parts of my life clashing together. <laughs> I've never had you involved with any of my personal projects or anything, but I just thought it'd be something interesting to do. Well, I, I thought I, I was honored to do it. Well, thank you, Dad. I love you very much. And I love uh, you. But, hey, this has been a Southern Renaissance. I've had Thomas Eugene Purdue, a.k.a. the Alabama Wild Man, my dad right here. So I uh, hope you all have a good one, and we'll see you on the next show. I'm probably going to be scared to death. <laughs> oh, I won't. You've never, you've never been on the radio before. I'm, ki- I'm kidding. You've never done it. This is the first time first time you ever had a microphone in front of you. No. Okay.